the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is a marvelous day that God has given us. Every day that God gives you is a gift. And let us not waste the gift of life that God has given each and every one of us. You can find us here at 3106 Fairland Road in Silver Spring, Maryland. <clears throat> 20904, we're Abyssinia Baptist Church, located right here in your community. I just want to bring a message to you today, titled, No More Excuses. I have, in the last 30 days, um, four people that I've known have passed away in the last 30 days. And when I look at or read their obituary, I don't look at uh, so much as where they worked or how many children that they had or, or how much money they had or all the other accolades and things that are placed in the obituaries. I look for one specific thing first, most of all. I look to find out if they ever accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life. I bypass all the other stuff. And when I find out in the obituary that they were a the member of so-and-so church, and then on such and such a date, they accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and were baptized. That's the first thing I look for. And after I find that, then I go on and read the rest of the obituary. So this morning I want to pick up from a passage out of the book of Luke chapter uh, 14. Luke chapter 14. I'll pick up at verse 15. I'll read it in this content and I'll preach off of it after that. Luke chapter 14 started at verse 15. And when one of them that sat at meat was with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one accord began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must need go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of ox, and I have go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. And yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of these men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. May the Lord have a blessing on the reading of his holy word. We thank you, Father, for this blessed day. No more excuses. I sit back and I think about all the excuses that people make. 
when it comes to coming to the Lord. I sit back and I listen to all the things that they have to say. Some say, Look, I don't know, I have to work today. Some say, look, I, I'm not feeling good today. Some might say, hey, I got to take my kid to soccer practice or to football practice. Some might say, whatever it may be, I have to go help out a friend today. But how many excuses can you give God before the time runs out on you? How many excuses can you give the Lord when the invitation of Christ is given unto you? How many excuses can you make when God himself says right here in the scripture that the supper table is ready? But yet the servants go out and they come back to the Lord and say, Lord, but there's still room at your table. He said, go out and compel them all to come in. Tell them that the banquet table is set. All things are now ready for you. And all you have to do is accept the invitation. But how many of us reject God? How many of us, when God extends his hand of love to us, we push his hand away? How many make up all kinds of excuses why they can't accept the Lord? I remember a while back I was saying I was going to tell you a little story <clears throat> about Satan had a big meeting with all his demons about how they were going to destroy mankind and everybody was putting in their ideas and this one insignificant little demon sat off in the corner all by himself, didn't have a lot of ranking at the time, raised his hand and said, I, I, I got an idea, I got an idea. And he said, you got an idea? Well, you know, <laughs> you just a little thing. So what's your idea? So he gave his spiel. He presented his information. He said, don't go and tell them that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Don't stop them when they try to tell people that story. Don't Try to stop the preaching from talking about heaven and hell. Don't even try to stop them from accepting Christ. And they say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're trying to find a way to destroy mankind. If they come to Jesus, they're going to be saved. They say, yeah, don't do anything. Don't, just leave them alone. He said, well, how do you figure that we're going to win by using this strategy? Just tell them you got all the time in the world to make your decision. And they were like, wow, that's a brilliant idea. He said, because his name was the spirit of procrastination. Let them go on about their day and let them keep on making excuses. And so while they keep on making excuses why they can't accept Christ and get into heaven, we're plotting and planning and scheming how to tear their life apart. For Jesus Christ already told us, the thief come but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I'll come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. How many more excuses can you make? I had a talk with a friend of mine one day, and he said to me, you know, man, when the Redskins win the Super Bowl, I come down to the church and turn my life over to the Lord. I said, are you for real? When the Redskins win the Super Bowl? He said, yeah, that's when I'll come down to the church and I'll turn my life over to the Lord then. I said, man, let me tell you something. The Redskins haven't won a Super Bowl since 1992. That was like 28, maybe 30 years ago since the last time the Redskins won a Super Bowl. I said, you mean to tell me that you're going to wait another 28 to 30 years before you come down to the church and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and be baptized in the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit? He said, yeah, that's when I'll do it, when the Redskins 
win another Super Bowl. I said, so you mean to tell me that you put your soul salvation in the hands of the Washington Redskins? And he said, wait, well, when they win, then I'll come down there. How much more time does God need to give anybody to accept his son? Like I said before, we only got two gifts. The gift of time and the gift of Jesus Christ. How much more time do you need to accept the Lord? How many more excuses are you going to make before God pulls your ticket? How many more excuses are you going to make before the sand and the hourglass of your life is going to run out? How, how, how many more excuses are you going to make before the marble on the roulette wheel of life land on your number? What you going to tell God? Because the point on the man wants to die and then the judgment. What you going to tell God when you standing before him on the at the judgment seat of life. What you going to say to him? Lord, I was sick that day when the invitation came out. Lord, I had to work overtime today. 28 years working overtime? What can you going to say to God? What can you tell the Lord why you didn't accept his son? There's only two things that you're going to hear. Well done, my good and faithful servant, or I never knew you. Which one do you want to hear today? Do you want to hear God tell you, I never knew you? Into the lake of fire you go? Or would you rather hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the kingdom of God that was prepared for you from the foundation of the world. What do you want to hear? How many more excuses can you make? I sit back and think about this all the time. All the time I sit back and think about it. How many more excuses? I listen to this brother. When the Redskins win the Super Bowl? And you bet me a soul salvation on the Redskins? I, 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 can't, I can't imagine. I, I, can't, I can't comprehend it in my mind. But the word of God says in the book of Proverbs chapter 1 the word of God says but I have called unto you and you regarded me not. With an outstretched hand I've been calling you but you did not accept me. God has been extending his hand of love Extending his hand of peace. Extending his hand of salvation. An everlasting life to the whole world. For the north, east, south, and from the west. No matter who they are. No matter where they are. Whether they're rich or poor, black or white. Asian or Hispanic. God's hand of love has been extended to the whole world. And nobody regarded. When God extends his hand and says, grab a hold of my hand and accept salvation, how many have pushed his hand away? Well, the Apostle Paul said, we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciling mankind back to God. And me telling you all these other things in the scriptures, how God going to bless you, how God going to do this for you, don't mean nothing if you ain't got Christ. Carries no weight at all. Too many of that we talk about. The, we may use the material things to bring an illustration, but if you ain't got Jesus, you ain't got nothing on earth. I just want to read a passage of scripture to you. For those who have not accepted Jesus Christ yet, I want to read a passage of scripture to you. And I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will touch your heart and convince your heart. And let you know that you need a Savior. Listen, out of the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 9 to 13. 
that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call on him today. Pray to him today. Cry out to him today. The Father, come and save me. Come and deliver me. Help me. I need your help because we need a Savior. I just want to lift up the prayer basket today. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before thee thanking you and praising you. And to continue to always pray day and night. Knowing that you hear our prayers. Now, we know we have an adversary out here in the world that try to oppress us. But Father, I know that you will avenge us in due time. I know it's, you said in your word speedily that you will come. And that you will answer the prayers of your elect. I thank you now, Father, in Jesus' name. For all the names that's in this basket. You know every situation, you know every test, trial, and tribulation that they're going through. You know everything that's taking place in their life. So, Father, I lift up the basket to you, Father, and I place it in your hand. I place their prayers in your hand, Father, because you care about us. And you know each and every situation. You know every name that's in here. We don't know the names that are here. It's in the envelope. We don't know anything about the people. But they trust in you right now, Father, to intervene in their behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. And if there's anybody's name that's in here that's unsaved right now, Father, and he wants salvation, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you touch their heart, Father, and that they call on you, they cry out to you, and ask, and ask for forgiveness and accept your Son as Lord and Savior of their life, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, we praise you, we give you the honor, we give you the glory. It ain't no other God but you to serve and to glorify and to pray to and to brag about to this whole world that God is good in Jesus' name. So, with all this coronavirus pandemic, when everything has calmed down, uh, there'll be a, a message at the end of the broadcast of our address. And if you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we will welcome you into the church. You know, when the, when the time for the church is to open up again and, and you walk down front and you accept Jesus Christ the Lord to save your life and we'll baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You know, we're located here at 3106 Fairland Road to Silver Spring, Maryland, 20904, uh, Abyssinia Baptist Church. Uh, you can go onto our website at ABCGIC. Dot o -R -G, a -B -C -G -I -C dot o -R -G. Uh, you want prayer for any situation in your life, just click on the link and we'll, we'll send a prayer request for you in the name of Jesus Christ. We just thank you for your, for your patience and, and the love of God and the goodness of God and the kindness of God. We thank him most of all for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank him for the precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty, wonderful, and dynamic, awesome, and powerful name. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. I can't thank God enough for what he has done for me. And as the song said, I, I never will forget what he's done for me. I never will forget what he's done for me. That's why I just thank him so much all the time. In Jesus' name. I just want to close out with this, with this prayer. A blessing on each and every one. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord of his conscience upon thee and give thee peace. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And let the church say and everybody say, Amen.